and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Soul Tie mid range that's going to start off our MCQ practice today. Tomorrow is the Arena Mythic Championship qualifier. Um, I'm going to be streaming that at 10 a.m. Eastern. So right away early in the morning, you get your Saturday morning MCQ stream in there. And we're doing a 12 hour stream tomorrow as well. Uh, to celebrate getting enough sub goals. So we're starting at 10 a.m., finishing at 10 p.m., you know, finishing at normal time, but we're starting five hours earlier than normal. What deck I'm going to play in the MCQ, I'm not sure yet. This is the deck that, that I'm excited about, that I wanted to try, that I made a couple of days ago. We didn't get to it on Wednesday, though. I was planning on playing it Wednesday, but our other decks took too long. And so this is going to be really first time trying it out, but it's it's basically just... A pile of cards that I want to play <laughs> kind of thing so we're gonna you know try it out see how well it plays um, and uh, if and so basically I may play more usually I play five matches with the deck I may be playing more than five matches like maybe I'll do ten here maybe we'll do this in like two parts you know like to get to get more practice with the deck uh, so we may do two YouTube videos depending on how it goes you know if, if it doesn't go too well and we want to scrap it move on to the next deck then we'll do that as well um yeah this is this is a good stuff deck that's that's exactly what we have here uh i'm i'm pretty set on playing risen reef all right so i already know one card i'm going to be registering we're going to be regi registering risen reef uh some options with that um the soul type mid range we're about to play uh then the last couple of days we've played two strong looking um risen reef decks with simic quasi reef and soul type value so we may may try those decks out today also, you know, like retry those. Um, other options, if, if if I don't like any of these, maybe we'll go to like Teamer, Elementals, uh, maybe just like a like a Bant Ramp kind of thing. Um, may go that route as well. So those are like the backup options. So uh, no matter what, we're going to be going Risen Reef uh, tomorrow. Card is just awesome, and the basically not only is Risen Reef awesome, but so is Cavalier of Thorns. I, I'm definitely playing Risen Reef Cavalier of Thorns. <laughs> We're going with those these two. Um, yeah, because they, they just provide so much advantage, get, let you hit a lot of land drops, let you draw a lot of cards. Want to be playing those cards. So with this deck, we we're pairing those that engine, the elemental engine there, with black because black has like the best disruption in the format. It has Legion's End, one of the very best removal spells in the format of Vampires and Scapeshift being two really big decks. So we have four Legion's Ends between our main and our sideboard. We have Thought Erasure, which is one of the absolute best cards in Standard. So, you know, we're going with a four Thought Erasure. Hydroid Crisis, same kind of thing. Just if we're getting a whole lot of mana, what we want to be doing is playing Hydroid Crisis to gain, li gain life, draw cards, and put a huge threat into play. Same thing, one of the best cards in Standard is Nissa. Um, good chance I should be playing four Nissa. I got three in here because I wanted to fit other stuff in. But yeah, Nissa is just repeatable. Three, haste three threes, really hard card to beat. Just another great threat. Uh, rounding those out, I have a few other Planeswalkers that I like. I, I do like Liliana, Ugin. I think they're pretty powerful. We're, we're kind of ramping into them. We got 26 lands in here because we're trying to hit all of our land drops. Um, if one of these two don't uh perform too well and i think i think ugin's probably a little better than liliana but if one of these don't perform that well we could we could take one out and play a fourth nissa or a third hostage taker um with uh with these slots here but i like both of these cards like liliana is like the best card in the format against feather with the sacrifice two creatures uh kind of thing and ugin is just just takes care of so many permanents that can be problematic for us um our other creature that I really like these days, especially against vampires, with vampires being so important, I really, uh, really like Hostage Taker. You know, usually we're playing it at five or six mana, uh, where we want to play it, steal a creature, and then you know, like steal a Knight of the Ebon Legion, and then be able to cast Knight of the Ebon Legion, and then we have their Knight of the Ebon Legion that we get to activate. That is just so important against vampires. Um, very good against Krasis also. You know, a lot of other decks are like Krasis decks or um, things like that. You know, we could take our opponent's Risen Reefs in Elemental Mirrors. So very important card here. Um, and then I want to try a Fine Finality. 
this this is another card that could just be the fourth Nissa here, uh, where our creatures are really good. Krasis, Risen Reef, Hostage Taker, Cavalier Thorns, those are really good creatures. And so being able to return, you know, get a two for one, putting two of them back into our hand, that's something I'm really interested in, especially with Cavalier Thorns kind of filling the graveyard. But then also Finality is good against a lot of decks. Finality is a really good card against Vampires. Um, it's It can be also be useful against the Scapeshift deck game one if they do Scapeshift and have just tons of zombies. We have an, a third sweeper here besides the two Legion's ends, so we have a Finality that can clear the board. Um, so yeah, it, it seems like it could be a pretty good option as well. So I wanted to give that a try. Uh, sideboard, of course, Veil of Summer, Legion's End, Noxious Grasp. Uh, these are just awesome cards. Unmoored Ego is so important against the Scapeshift deck and against Combo, against Nexus. So, like, yeah, I love having Veil of Summer and I love having Unmoored Ego. You know, like, I basically, I like just these cards that we have. Golgari Queen, I didn't talk too much about Golgari Queen. It's it's really good against all these three-mana Planeswalkers, these little Teferis that are running around um, and so on. Like, with that minus ability, it can be pretty nice there so we got one in the main one in the sideboard and uh besides that vivian and command the dread horde are two two tools against esper to give to give us a lot of card advantage and then enter the god eternals against aggro uh where i think enter the god eternals in a green deck is probably more valuable than it is normally if we kind of compare this to ripjaw raptor like where you you'd have like sideboard ripjaw raptor against like mono red for example, or, you know, against Vampire or something like that, where Enter the God Eternals is a 4-4 instead of a 4-5, worse, but it also kills something when it enters the battlefield and you gain 4 life. So those are both pretty nice. And when you combine it with a lot of other blockers or, you know, some other blockers like Cavalier Thorns or Hydra Crisis, I could see this doing some good work for us. So I want that in here. Okay. So let's give this deck a try. Basically, it's a whole lot of cards that I like, but we haven't haven't really seen it in action yet. So we'll see if it does work out. Mana base wise, I didn't show my mana base. I'm not playing any basics. That could certainly be a problem. We may need to change that. I'm just playing the 24 duels, and I'm playing one of each temple: the green black temple and the green blue temple. So we got 18 green sources, and we got a couple of temples for some scrying, and then we have good mana base with the shocks and um shocks and checks uh, hey schlag thanks so much for that twitch prime sub now because of that i am the the problem there is i am really relying on having shock lands because if we don't have shock lands we're so really relying on having those 12 cards so honestly i should probably be taking out like two check lands for two basics uh just to have so we have like 14 lands that start the game untapped Okay, we're going to uh, I'm keeping Risen Reef Nissa. It's between Krasis and Taker. We'll get rid of Taker. Yeah, the, full, the first hand didn't have any blue mana. It could cast the Leafkin Druid, but then besides Leafkin Druid, it was just all really expensive stuff. And so it wasn't like if I hit like one land drop, we're doing okay. I had, I had the Leafkin Druid for acceleration. But it just had a lot of expensive things. Um, that that first hand is certainly looking better than what we have going on here, though. I kept a hand that could be okay against control with like these value things, but the, this is not a good hand against vampires, as we see here. So I'll be conceding here. This game is very over. Not let my opponent see any more than just that. So 
we're gonna have legions ends this extra hostage taker enter the god eternals the skolgari queen well so normally i'd bring in veil of summer against vampires to protect things because like their removal spells but they may not know what kind of deck i really am to start with all right we're trimming down the top end Liliana is definitely going. I guess Ugin as well. I wonder if I don't really want Thought Erasure here. Like, maybe actually I keep one of these six drops. Maybe I just cut the four Thought Erasures. The one card that I'm just really worried about that we just don't, there's just not very good answers to in these colors is Soren. Could play Ugin that can kill Soren instead of Liliana. I guess I have the Golgari Queen. That's right. That's that's Golgari Queen. I thought I had something. Never mind. I had Golgari Queen. Right. That's a water. I'm going to wait a little bit on the temple. There's a lot of cards that would be just fine to draw here. Not really that one. I guess I would have got more value out of the temple if I would have done it turn one, seen the breeding pool, and put it on the bottom. But oh well. All right, so they have a cast down. They can kill Cavalier. Or, of course, they could kill Krasis here. But, of course, I don't, I don't really mind Krasis dying because I can find it back. We also have the backup finality if need be. surprised they're willing to trade that. I could definitely see them cast downing their own aspirant. I am fine with that. It's a pretty good trade for me. Yep, still got still got two, and now our Cavalier won't die. Um, and yeah, I'm still playing Cavalier. I 
That's an, I guess, yeah, none of these are forests. Well, that was a, a well-timed Cavalier. That was like five cards that weren't very good. That we milled over there. So I can either get back Krasis. Like if I cast Finality, they're like pretty dead. So we might as well just do that. All right, so what if we go black, black, green, green. All right. All right, so I'm going to play this Veil of Summer over this Ugin. Just the one Veil of Summer? Because they're going to have Noxious Grasps and everything like that. So, like, countering those things and, and drawing a card for one mana is pretty awesome. But we have to make sure that we keep in a good amount of threats and everything, too. I mean, it, it could be that I just cut Risen Reef, I guess. Risen Reef on the draw isn't spectacular. Maybe I actually do that and then just keep these impactful six drops. Or have Thought Erasure on the draw where we're going to be a little slower. Because, like, having six drops when we're going to be a little slower isn't spectacular either. Or I could just play two Risen Reefs. I'm going to play two Thought Ragers instead of two Risen Reefs. Hostage Taker is perfect in this matchup. Don't want to take that out. This is the, this is the matchup for Hostage Taker. But, uh... You know, the, the Veil of Summer does a really good job protecting. I'm not sure there if I want Thought Erasures or Risen Reefs. I think I think I kind of regretted keeping Risen Reefs for game two there. But maybe I want two Reef. I'm not sure, honestly. All right, turn three, Cavalier. No minus, no minus, plus, plus. Darn it. All right, well, they had their turn three combo that's really hard to beat. We'll see if we get to do that. We'll see if we can beat it here on the draw here. It's a really tough combo. We have a lot of pretty good options. If they kill Cavalier, we have a lot of pretty good options to grab back. Hostage Taker and Gadanta Vanguard is pretty nice.
Hmm. No blocks though. That was a pretty good turn. Hey, Zerf, going good? Oh, Deckmaster is not turned on. Thanks for reminding me to turn that on. Forgot about that. Should be on now. So we're in still really tough to beat. That's a good one. So yeah, we don't mind finding Golgari Queen that can kill the Sorin. The Leaf Kindred is going to be chump block in here. Or chump block in the Adanto Vanguard. Assuming it has the Death Touch and Lifelink again. Deserve. I could chump with with Krasis and then have Krasis, and then you know after Cavalier dies, be able to get Krasis back, but. Okay, so we'll have like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I just get back another Cavalier. And then this Cavalier can get Krasis. Oh, that's... That's rough. I bestow a mighty curse. This is a really good vampire hand here. Going down to one, it's like another Soren kills me.
will not fail. Hey, Cooper. Curse your bloodline. Yeah, I'm dead to anything right now. Because I can't... You know, it's basically play... Nissa or play Cavalier, which I, I guess I shouldn't have plussed on the. Okay, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, like either way, we're like we're basically gonna be chump blocking. That was a yeah heck of a hand there for game three. So, game one I I didn't have a competitive hand whatsoever. You know, like game one, my hand was just horrendous. I didn't, I didn't even play a card. And then game three, that's... That was a heck of a hand there. Game three. Hmm. So my decks take a while to develop. You need more early removal. We just played Cavalier Thorns on game on turn three that game, and we got ran over. Like Cavalier Thorns on turn three, like how how much faster can you like? Is that taking a while to develop? Like they had Soren into Champion, you know, had, you know Dante Vanguard, then Soren into Champion, then Soren into Champion again, And then they just had infinite cards and then just, you know, cast a whole bunch of removal spells and other stuff. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's hard to be faster than that. Hmm. Double Domri's Ambush. I wouldn't mind if they draw a land here and play Shifting Ceratops. Then I get to Hostage Taker the Marauding Raptor. But then I guess they're going to kill the, the Hostage Taker then with the Tomri's Ambush. So I guess that's not perfect either. We're kind of just going to be taking some damage here. I, I think we're going to be okay, though, with this Cavalier of Thorns. I think. I don't know. That Tomri's Ambush killing the Cavalier of Thorns also, though. I was just going to play the Watery Grave, but then, you know, we drew that. You have to finish in the top thousand of a month in Mythic to qualify for an MCQ. The MCQs, I think they're, they seem to be like four a year, like one per set kind of thing. So like every, so like you just have to be in the top thousand for like, like this one that's going to be tomorrow you just the the previous three months like last month or the month before or the month before that if you're in the top thousand in any of those you qualify for this one here i 
and I did I was just the first month and then didn't work too hard for the other two because I was already qualified it's always shock lands So of course if they have like collision, I'm gonna die. Okay. Or they've drawn another removal spell. Their deck doesn't play hardly any removal, so a third removal spell is unfortunate. I couldn't block the like the hostage taker is blue, can't can't block that thing. Alright, need more Legion's Ends. Their deck relies on those two mana creatures. Get more Noxious Grass, of course. Enter the God Eternals is not that good, I guess. It's good against Regisaur Alpha? It's not enough. Golgari Queen kills a Rotting Regisaur, which is really important. Hey, Radical Guru. All right, Risen Reef, still pretty slow here. Difference is I do like Thought Erasure. Unmored Ego, the Raptors? It's just because they have tons of threats. Don't want to play Unmored Ego against mid-range decks like this. It's just, it takes a turn off and it's card disadvantage, and you can't just take a turn off against a, a... You can't take a turn off against a dinosaur deck that's just stomping, that's stomping you and killing you. You can't take a turn off to cast Unmored Ego. You'll, you'll just die. Just don't, just don't do that. All right, pretty nice looking hand here. Except for the whole everything's tapped, but besides that, we can be a little slower too since we're on the play. And if we want to like be legions ending two drops, you know, we have to wait for them to play the two drop first anyway, so it's all good. Well, they have Flame Sweep in their deck that doesn't kill anything except for Land War Elf. So that's cool. What a glorious day for Savannah! Oh, I'm sorry. Were you doing something? I wish you could see your face when I'm beating you. <laughs> That's pretty cute, Matthew.
was a really unfortunate last card for them to have. Like whatever they're like, all these cards are just like really beatable. They just had one card we didn't know. Then that and the draw step was like land register alpha. It's really rough. Why would, why would you tap the black source auto tap? Be back after I've licked my wounds. You'll see. Hmm. I'd like to be able to hostage taker the token, but with them having the reckless rage up, that's not reliable. So it's, it'd be good to have another black source, but. I also don't have a shock in play, so it's probably better to grab the breeding pool so that future lands, future other uh, tap lands will come into play untapped. But even next turn, if we have an untapped land, we can have that and that. Um. I'm gonna get the other black source though. Because we could draw, you know, a black removal spell that we want to play, like Hostage Shaker plus black removal spell together. Oh, that's not good. Alright, so we are pretty dead now. Sometimes. Sometimes your 26 land deck doesn't hit your land drops for you. We have to chump to not die. We're we're just dead. Like we don't I don't have any outs here. I don't have any outs because of that reckless rage. So my big mistake that game, I mean I guess, I don't I don't think it was a mistake, but because I didn't have mana, so I played I played the O3, but if I don't play the O3, and if I if I Noxious Grasp the Domery instead of playing the O3, then they wouldn't have had the ability to go land drop Regisaur Alpha. That, that was such a killer. You know, like looking at their hand, thinking, okay, well we can deal with all this kind of stuff. We just got to you know hit land drops and everything like that. We didn't, so we couldn't play our stuff, and then that. Their last two cards being land, Registar Alpha. Man, that's such a clock. No, I can't Hostage Taker the token. It doesn't work. Once you once you try to Hostage Taker the token, then in response to the Hostage Taker and the token, they just Reckless Rage and kill the Hostage Taker, and the token stays around. So we're at 0-2, but I don't feel bad about my deck. Which is kind of weird. 
But as somebody who's played the John Dinos a lot, both of those hands that my opponent had were like top 10%, like with the curve, like having the two drop and then continuing on from there, you know, like having two drop, then Domri, then Regisaur Alpha with all, you know, with like Reckless Rage removal, everything like that. Their hands were really good both times. Does, and you know, like we didn't really curve out. Um, the fact that I'm, I'm losing though to the curve out hands, does that mean that I shouldn't be playing my deck? I don't know. So like if, you know, we play against those, these linear aggro decks and they curve out really well, vampires and John dinosaurs, looks like they're going to beat us up if they curve out really well. But don't, don't they do that to kind of everything? Yes, obviously my deck has been too slow so far. That's... Yes, that has certainly been the case. Yeah, it, depend, it depends on how the, the mid-range is, is made up, uh, saying mid-range is good against aggro. It, it depends. Um, a card like Risen Reef is not good against aggro. It's just it's just way too small. You know, like a 1-1 one, one is not good against aggro. And so, like, when you're playing a mid-range deck where, like, your mid-game card, a really important turn, your turn 3, you're playing a 1-1... One, one, that's not going to be good enough to get the job done I've most of the time. Animals my entire life. Explains a lot, actually. Um. So we just got to beat a Rekindling Phoenix. Ugh, Cavalier Thorns should be able to do that. But on the other hand, Cavalier Thorns is, all, is very good against aggro. It's a very big body. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you doing something? We already have three other blue black lands, so I'm gonna take the the other green land. My opponent activated the Dom Ray to cast the Phoenix, so yeah, they, they weren't able to fight. Uh, they could have used the Paradise Druid to cast the Phoenix and then fight, but I I think may, I think they were not really expecting me to block, and they wanted to get the damage in with the Paradise Druid. But the fact that they had Sarkin as their other last card in hand. That looked kind of odd to offer the trade with the Paradise Druid then. When they would have needed that Paradise Druid to cast the Sarkin. Rackle Guru, read over here.
All right, so Bulgari Queen was going to eat the Phoenix token, and then we would play the Risen Reef. I wasn't going to attack with the Cavalier Thorn. It wouldn't kill the Domri anyway. Just going to sit back and play defense. Rekindling Phoenix can certainly be a problem. I guess Hostage Taker. I guess Hostage Taker is pretty good against Phoenix, though. But yeah, it seemed like maybe. I mean, we are just playing against aggro, aggro, aggro all the time. Like maybe these these six drops need to be more removal early on. Sarkin's going to be a problem. Uh, I don't I don't believe so doctor Playing in the MCQ is basically just like playing in ranked here you just play against anything like Just like playing in an open tournament basically you Yeah, you know, there's gonna be a, I don't know, 6,000 people qualified total. Yeah, I doesn't, like, could be a lot of those, you know, some people are going to be double qualified. Not everybody is going to show up kind of thing, but you just, it's it's very open. You just can, you can play against anything. It's not like you're going to play against anything more than something else. But I do expect Vampires to be the, the number one play deck. However, with the you know small sample of matches that I'll play, or any one person plays, that doesn't mean that you're going to be playing against it. Like It's possible that I just don't even play against Vampires at all tomorrow, even if it's the, the most popular deck. You know, it's just a, you know, it's just sample size kind of thing. Oh, let the blighters feel the ground tremble. So seeing that they're playing Zerta Goblin definitely makes me like Legion's End more. I'm going to be putting the fourth Legion's End um, from the sideboard into the deck. I don't think Vampires is a, is a poor choice at all. Even if even when people are prepared for it, it's still a really strong deck. 
as we saw whenever I played against vampires earlier. It's still just a it's a, just a really good deck. It's not it's not a bad choice. All right, so I need a couple more two and three mana removal spells in our deck. Maybe some cast downs. Maybe even another Enter the God Eternals. I need something else here against aggro. Good to know, good to know. So, you know, just put the, the deck together the other day, and we have learned that I need some more... Some more help against the aggro decks. I am not strong enough against aggro. And that's why we're practicing. I like a lot of what Team Our Elementals has going for it. I think it it's good against Esper. I think, you know, against control decks. You can play a lot of Blood Suns and be good against Scape Shift with a lot of Blood Suns. I don't know how Teamer Elementals beats Vampires. I haven't seen a Teamer Elementals deck beat, be consistently able to beat Vampires at all. I don't think... I don't like the Teamer Colored Removal matching up against Vampires. And that's my main trepidation about the deck. But it is on the short list of decks that I'll maybe play, because it is a Risen Reef deck I'm going to be playing. As I talked to, I'm going to be playing a Risen Reef deck. Decided that. Um, I think if I if I would put play Team or Elementals, I'd be probably be playing Entrancing Melodies main deck. I'd, I'd have four Entrancing Melodies in the 75, probably like one or two main, and then the others in the sideboard. Because I think that is a card. I think that's the best removal spell against Vampires for for the Team or Colors is Melody. Well, the good news That's just not even worth playing the crisis here cuz even as a 2-2, two -two, it's just not going to do anything. The good news is they don't have another red source right now. So no red source, please. Obviously, they draw the red source. And obviously no land for me. Yeah, the Sultai value that we played yesterday is definitely going to... That deck is certainly more... That's, that deck's certainly better possession, positioned... Sorry, positioned against... Um, against aggro. That has a whole lot more anti-aggro cards in it. Oh, we're just going to get this fifth land, could we? Don't really see how I win.
fight with fire. Boom. That will kill Hasa Shaker even if I steal a Phoenix. <laughs> uh, of course, they draw lands they can have Phoenix with Veil of Summer back up. Why not? Okay, so looking at this, definitely feels like we need some more cards against aggro. We're talking like cast downs. Um, could just be better three mana creatures that, that can help us more. I think our, our six mana creatures, or sorry, six mana planeswalkers, they're definitely looking slow here. So cast down or or lich or even jade light. Even just playing a couple jade lights could be nice. What are those kind of cards do I want? Yeah, I think like Lich, Jade Light, Cast Down. Well, I'll play uh, Contempt. Can help against walkers and can exile and stuff. A contempt and a cast down. It's not like we have like that many four drops anyway. We go with a, a Contempt and a Cast Down. Okay, let's try this. All right, I will edit the Stream Decker page. All right, so two scape shifts, a crisis, and a time wipe. I mean, I guess this is finality. 
They can take down a escape shift if they if they get to ramp a whole lot. Yeah, I should keep it. My main plan is the reason why I took the time wipe because my main plan is Leafkin next turn and then Nissa and just kind of beat him down. Well, I was pretty lucky. I know that they needed, you know, like they needed to draw another white source and a blue source for the time wipe. So I could have like taken growth spiral, but I don't. I think taking the time wipe is my best thing to be doing. I am not going to sit this one out. Trust me, I have a plan. I am not making this up as I go. Man, they get a blocker to save Teferi now. Plus get another land. Ugh. I will protect the virtue of this world. Be wary of the ground you walk on. We have the first scape shift kind of covered. Wouldn't mind drawing another Thought Erasure to take the other one. Wouldn't mind them not drawing a land here. Oh, come on. That went really, really well for our opponent. From whenever they only had the three lands a little bit ago. Nope. You're right, I can't I can't beat Vincent Speed Scape Shift. I cannot cast Golgari Queen and Finality this turn either. Right? Two, four, six. I guess I can. It's gonna take And take some finagling. I guess I can. I'm good at what I do, and what I do is win. So obviously I, I can kill Teferi, this. but then they just let, you know, they, then they just cast Scape Shift at end step. The land shall conquer you. If I go this way, maybe they try to protect Teferi and scape shift here. But then I guess I can't I can't cast finality then. Still because my lands are dead. My lands are dead. So I'm just I'm just in trouble. We will meet again. Don't really see us surviving.
Yeah, sac sacrificing the fields gives you more zombies. That's the, the smart play. Right there. Because you get more ETB effects. It's It hurts if, if I have removal, but it gives them more zombies there. All right, that's why we have all of our unmoored egos. Hostage Taker is awesome against Krasis. Yeah, maybe I'll try taking out Nissa. Because making a bunch of like 3 3 lands, like turning your lands into things that die to zombies, is pretty rough. I'm not sure if we'll have like the firepower to get through though. Can't really keep that first hand. Like this, we at least have a Thought Erasure, but we gotta look for Unmoored Ego in this matchup. I, like a seven without Unmoored Ego, I'm probably mulliganing unless it has like discard and, and other good things, but um, I gotta start looking for, looking for Unmoored Ego, but then, you know, that was a six. I'm not sure if I wanna go to five for it. We'll try this with the Risen Reef. Digging. So that means the ego is not going to get Vela summered, so that's not so bad. Well, we can't beat instant speed scape shifts, but we do have a bunch of legions ends for non instant speed scape shifts. If we're not going to draw ego here, I'd like to draw land to be able to crace this for four. Show restraint. This 
Might be a bad idea. to step out of the shadows. Man, that card is messed up. It's only a matter of time. Man, that card's messed up. We gotta keep Teferi out of here. Gotta keep instant speed scape shift away. Okay, we'll see what our opponent has. If they have to fairy escape shift, we die. This isn't a fight you can win. Let's try this. What a what a card. You've got to be kidding me if you have Vela Summer. They had a third Vela Summer. I'm gonna be like, you've got to be kidding me. I don't know why they're just doing this right now anyway, though. I don't know why they're not waiting till end step. You need seven different land types to trigger escape shift. Or like to trigger field of the dead, sorry, to trigger field of the dead you need seven different types, not six. So six others with field of the dead works. Yeah, so now they're tapped out, so now I get to Legion's End before Thought Erasure. So I can look at their hand first. All right, so it's just circuitous route. It's still worth taking circuitous route, though. Hmm, I guess that triggers two risen reefs. Block a zombie. Um, Lana Wolf is our worst card to see here because of Blast Zone. Not, don't really want another one drop. That's the worst card to draw in the deck. And also, you know, it's just our lowest powered card. All right, they'll blow up the reefs.
it's honestly it's still just gonna be kind of difficult beating like you know these field of the deads just you know so many two twos every turn that's still hard to beat you know we didn't get to unmoored ego away field of the dead it's a really difficult card to beat You didn't get a sub notification, so then no, I didn't count it. So, um, just a second, let me head on over to Streamlabs. Trust We've had a few subs. Have the sub notifications not been popping up? The hero thing before. It says here that we've had six subscribers today. Last one there was yours 20 minutes ago. And we had Macron 25 minutes ago. Hmm. I don't know why y'all didn't, didn't show up, but... How much mana do I have? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If I cast this, I have 9, so I could have Krasis for 7. Um, they have Field of Ruin, they can get them 3 zombies. They've drawn another Teferi Scapeshift? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is over. Yeah, it's game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm dead. I'm I'm just dead. All right, so attacking Teferi, so Teferi doesn't get a bounce of Krasis. Then I have 11 power in the air, and they're at 11. But it doesn't matter. Instant speed scape shift is unbeatable. God, what a horrible deck to play against. Kind of my only hope there, I guess, is egoing away field of field of the dead. That's such a terrible combo to ferry and like Nexus is so much easier to interact with than than that combo. Well, I can say after playing this. It's not nearly as enjoyable to play as the Sultai value deck. So I think we're going to move on here from Sultai midrange. Go towards our other couple options here. Um, maybe try... Alright, we may have a fourth option then. Um with the team or elementals. 
So it doesn't look like... You know, like, these are all cards that I really like, but... I think it's a little too reactive. I, th You know, after kind of playing this, I think that maybe... It's a little too reactive. To be fair, our, our opponents did draw very well in all of those games, but if we're not able to beat opponents that are drawing well, like we didn't have opponents that didn't draw well, like in any game, like, like every single game, cards that they needed to draw, they were drawing. That still doesn't bode well if we can't overcome that, though. It's not a power level issue for this deck. That is not a, that is not the issue. It's the it's the needing specific cards and specific matchups to line up against other cards kind of thing. You know, we need like our risen reefs against control and we need our removal against aggro and and so and things like that and whenever our cards whenever we're drawing the wrong part of the deck for the wrong matchup, which is what we were doing frequently and our opponents weren't letting up the gas at all. Um, kind of always having everything. We just we just weren't winning. There weren't really any of those matchups that I'm like convinced that, like any of those decks that we played, except for except for the the scape shift deck. I could definitely see us being an underdog to the scape shift deck by a little ways, but I, like the other couple matchups that we played, the aggro decks. I don't I don't think that. Like, realistically, I don't think this deck is less than 45% to win any of those other matchups. We kind of had a combination of both sides of variance, of us not having the correct part of our deck and our opponents having top 10, 15% of their hands all the time and draw steps. So, sorry, still time mid-range. Okay, um, so that's that's going to be it here for Soul Time Midrange. We are going to move on and try our next deck. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons for the video. Hope you learned stuff just as I did here. And let's go on over to our next deck and see if that one will be good enough for the MCQ. So our next deck is going to be... Uh, Simic Quasi Reef, the deck we played a few days ago. That felt pretty good. May update a couple of things here. But, uh, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to click on over to the next video. We'll see you for a minute. Uh, we'll see you back here in a minute.